Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On today's video, I'm going to be cooking up sugar cured baby back ribs. It's off the menu from the legendary Trader Vic's Tiki Bar. And I have a special guest. Let's get going. So as you can see, I'm not at my normal, the Ballistic Barbecue lair home base. I'm up north about an hour and a half from San Diego at what is known as the Breezeway. It's a tiki oasis and it's owned by my friend, the creator of the YouTube channel and the band, the Hula Girls, Spike. <laughs> Come on up here, Spike. Hi, thanks so much for having me Hello. on your show it, at my house, which is so weird to come like to my bar as a guest behind the bar, you know? <laughs> it's really weird for me to be here actually because Spike has a channel that my wife and I have fallen in love with. It actually kind of helped us get through the very, being a Californian, you get it, the very intense beginning of the lockdown. You know, we didn't have any place to go and we kind of immersed ourselves in YouTube and we found Spike's channel and we fell in love with it. So oh, thank, thank you, you so for much. That. I really do appreciate you bringing your subscribers also to my world. I, I really do. I hope, I think they're going to dig this. Um, so. You want to tell, <laughs> tell my, tell my viewers about you, what you do, what your channel is? Yeah. So I'm, I'm really, I'm a guitar player. I, I play a guitar in a band called the Hula Girls. It's like a rockabilly surf kind of thing. And, uh, and when the lockdown stuff started to happen, I was like, well, we're not going to be performing anymore. So in the meantime, I can at least do these vintage tiki cocktails that were made popular by Don the Beachcomber, Trader Vic, uh, at bars like Stephen Crane's Luau and the Islander and all kinds of different places. And so I focus on very traditional tiki cocktails. One of the things that, that drew me to this channel, to Spike's channel, is he's obsessed with the history of these drinks. And, you know, he goes over the top finding the correct spirits to use, the mm -hmm. correct ingredients. And a lot of these these cocktails were lost in history and they're just now finally, you know, being uncovered. Mm -hmm. And I'm the same way when it comes to, you know, these really iconic historic hamburgers. You know, I go above and beyond. I mean, it drives my wife crazy trying to replicate these, uh -huh. these recipes. So I'm, I'm digging it, man. This well, is why I'm here. And I thought that that's why we were such a good, good uh, pairing is because I saw you doing the historic hamburgers and stuff. And I was like, oh man, maybe if we could do a Trader Vic's meal, yes. then it would make sense for my channel. It makes sense for it your makes channel. Sense. It makes sense for America or wherever you are, anywhere, really. So what I'm, what, what my half of this collaboration is, we're making the sugar cured, on the menu it's spare ribs, but I'm using baby backs because of the cooker I'm using it, they'll, they'll fit easier. But the sugar cured barbecue ribs and couple things were going through my mind when I was reading this recipe. Um, you start reading the history of Trader Vic's and he cooks in what he calls Chinese clay ovens, I right. think, or Chinese clay barbecues. Yeah. Well, what comes to mind is a Kamado, of course, Japanese in origin, but I think it'll work perfectly for this recipe. Um, I'm running off of the book uh, Trader Vic's Tiki Party. Yeah. And you're using... Yeah, and, and so for my portion of the video, we're going to be using Trader Vic's Bartender's Guide from 1972 and Trader Vic's Bartender's Guide, yeah, from 1947. And uh, and this drink that I'm going to be doing dates from the 1940s. Wow. Yeah, Trader Vic's Punch. So it should be a good cocktail, and I imagine that this is going to be really good, too. Yeah, I did a test run on these, and they're really good. Yeah. You ready to start cooking? Yeah, let's cook. Okay. So again, what I'm using is baby back ribs. Are you familiar, familiar with baby backs? Uh, yeah, I've been to Tony Romans. Okay. <laughs> so there's spare ribs and baby backs on pork. And if you can imagine a prime rib mm -hmm. on, on a pig, th this is this would come off a of prime rib. Okay. So if you see beef back ribs, it's the, these ribs, but only much bigger, much okay. larger. Sure. Um, normally the first thing we're going to do on any rack of ribs is there's a membrane here that we peel off. Where I bought these ribs, they had already peeled them off, which is time saver for me. I'm not going to complain too much. Sure. Um, so other than that, it's easy trim. We're just going to cut off, you know, these little kind of tags of meat here. Uh, yeah, they, I think that's a very sexy word. That seems like a super sharp knife. Yeah, it's a Japanese knife, actually. I got a ceramic one. <laughs> yeah, you do, don't you? Mm -hmm. 
We're gonna have to fix that. <laughs> so anyway, as far as the trimming, I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't competition. We're, this is for you and I to eat. Yeah. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just cut the rack in half because I'm using a little big green, a big a little big green egg, <laughs> little big green egg mini max. Yeah. And uh, a full length rack won't fit. So just cut through there and we're done. Next thing we're going to do is the cure. It's what they call a sugar cure. Mm -hmm. So the interesting thing to me is that right away, I noticed that we're using Demerara sugar and Demerara sugar pops up a lot in tiki cocktails. Yes. And I love Demerara sugar. Mm -hmm. Actually, whenever I have to use sugar in a sauce or whatever, this is my go-to. Okay. It's, it's, it's raw, you know, it's unbleached. Mm -hmm. I think it tastes better than regular, just the regular granulated sugar. Okay, so what am I doing so with gonna, this? That's a quarter cup, so we're gonna go with three quarters of a cup in here. Oh, three quarters. Three, three, three of those. Okay, so I have to make sure it's like over the top? Nah, it doesn't matter. Okay. It's not okay. rocket science. Okay, well that's the, that's the interesting thing about tiki cocktails, is that it comes down to an eighth of an ounce sometimes. Yeah, this isn't gonna make that big of a difference. <laughs> yeah, but sure. we, the other thing is like <laughs> baking, it, that'd be, that's different. You know, there's a lot of- Well, it's science. Science, yeah. Science. 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 <laughs> bingo, bingo. Yeah, I get it. I know, this is salt. It isn't what it looks like. Here, you can take oh that. My God. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, I got a straw endorsement for. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is um, kosher salt, and the reason I use kosher salt. How is, much is this? Uh, two of those, two tablespoons. Okay. And the reason I use table salt is for the same reason as I use Timura sugar. It's just salt. Um, there isn't any, you know, anti-caking agents or any iodine or anything. It just tastes like salt. And also, it's coarse, so when you're sprinkling it on by hand, mm -hmm. you can actually feel what you're doing. Let's get oh. done with that. What are you going to do with this? Let's put it down. This is weird being a guest on my, on my thing. It's weird. I'm you're even in my spot. I know. It's so weird. <laughs> I'm going alpha on you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, this is... I haven't done a whole lot of collaboration, so it's, it's yeah. different for me too. Yeah. So I'm gonna put some gloves on. So I shook it up in the bag just to mix up the salt and sugar. So, so like the old shake and bake. It's kind of a retro product. Yeah, right. And by doing that, it just coats? Yeah, so this is going to coat, coat the meat and the salt and the sugar, basically what's going to happen is it's going to draw moisture out of the ribs. Okay. And then it's going to pull it back in. Wait, what? It's going to draw it out and then it's going to pull it back yeah, in? Yeah, so the meat, so the salt and the sugar is going to pull moisture out of the meat. Right. And then the meat's going to pull the salt and sugar back into the meat. Does that make oh. sense? So it's, it's brining. Mm. And what happens is you get, you can do this with steak. Actually, I love doing it with steak. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just salt, salt raw steak, put it in the fridge on a rack, a cookie, like a cookie cooling rack. Okay. Overnight and you'll have perfectly seasoned steak. Interesting. And that's what we're doing here. So now what would happen is we're going to seal the bag. It's going to go in the fridge and stay in there a minimum of two hours. Two hours? Overnight is even better. Oh. But I did that in advance before I came to your house. Oh, the miracle of the film. The miracle of film. Oh, let me, yeah. let me grab the- Okay, let me get out of your way here. And here we are. That was quick. <laughs> these are the ribs I did these last night before I went to bed. So all the salt and all the sugar, is, it, it seems like it's what, emulsified? Oh yeah, it, it definitely it breaks down, it melts. Okay, so, wow. And you can see the, the ribs have actually taken on a little bit more of a kind of a pink, mm -hmm. pink hue. So this is a pretty healthy meal, right? Oh, it's very, very healthy. But, <laughs> look how, isn't it, see how bright it is now? Yeah, yeah. Let me get the sugar out of the way. It's, it's, it's nice and this is kind of weird like I said this is definitely not a hot and fast kind of cook because sugar burns oh big time okay so we're cooking low and slow with this recipe we're going barbecue mm -hmm. the original the recipe that I found in the book they seem to be catering to people kitchen cooking in kitchens mm -hmm. in ovens and I think a lot of it is um, the outdoor cooking culture has really evolved since then. Sure. You know, back then they were using these kind of rinky-dink grills and cooking hamburgers and hot dogs. Yeah. Where now we're, you know, 
cooking a little bit more advanced kind of outdoor cooking. Right, you kind of know the science behind barbecuing now. And, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, get these guys on the pit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as I mentioned, I'm using the Big Green Egg Mini Max today. Lump charcoal, obviously, and I have cherry wood in here, so it's going to impart a really nice kind of a sweet, smoky flavor, mm -hmm. and it's going to give the meat as it cooks this really nice kind of reddish look. Love cherry with pork. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and put them on. Running the um, the cooker again, the Kamado at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. How exciting. It is. <laughs> so we're cooking these until they're done, basically. Yeah. Um, in about three hours, what I'm going to do is baste them with a sauce that you and I are going to be making back in the breezeway. All right. You ready to go? Let's go. See you guys in the breezeway. Like I explained outside, we're going to make a really, really cool kind of, again, retro vibe glaze, a Polynesian kind of a glaze. Cool. Ready to kick this off? I'll start it off. This is one half cup hoisin sauce. And hoisin sauce is found in a lot of Asian type yeah. dishes, right? Yeah, it, smell this. It smells really good. Mm. You can use that alone. Right? Yeah. If you want to grab that, that's Thai chili. Thai chili. That's a quarter cup. That, right. It's kind of sweet, but also a little bit of heat. Mm hmm. Ooh. And a quarter cup here of just soy sauce. My mouth just started watering, smelling that. Really? Yeah. yeah it's good oh stuff. man, that smells so good. And I think Trader Vic came up with these recipes himself. He was quite the uh, the food and drink connoisseur. Really? Yeah. That's good. That's cool. Yeah. So do you know how to mince garlic? I think I do, but do you have a trick? Well, one trick, because there's a part, you know, like a parchment on here, like a... Yeah. One trick is to throw these into a like a Tupperware container, shake the hell out of it, and then the parchment will come off. Oh. But you still have to mince it. Right, so you get rid of like the, uh, the little... Yeah, get rid of the, the uh, ends. ends. Yeah. And then take your knife, put mm -hmm. it on top, and then you just hit it straight down with your heel, mm. the heel of your palm. Oh, okay. And then that stuff comes right off. Yep. And then just... Slice it away. Just like a little bit of that parchment in there. Mm -hmm. And then put your fingers, two fingers, right on the end of the knife here. Just some good mincing. You can smell that smell like yeah, that. Yeah, that's good. It smells so good. Usually everything smells rummy over here. I'm looking forward to that smell here in a little bit. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> there you go, brother. Oh, oh, I'm gonna do one. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and cut the ends off. And right? Don't put your finger on the pinch the fingers right here. Oh, pinch like that? Yes. Oh, really? You don't put your finger on the top of the knife. There's only certain types of knives, like when you like a boning knife, you can do that at times. But when you're doing things like this, you always pinch it like that. Wow. Okay. Helpful and tip. Smash it. There you go. Okay, and then and get rid of the parchment here. Yes. It's really called, it's called parchment? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, oh, sorry. Don't mince my fingers. Uh-huh, and then you said like this. Yeah, that'll work. I'm kind of scraping into a pile. It's all traveling away from me. Feels like Benny Hanna's. Oh, can I do that? Yeah. Okay. Just don't cut your finger. Okay. Is it super sharp knife? Yeah, it's a really, really sharp knife. Really? It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a brand called, a Japanese brand called Shun. Oh, okay. And uh, it, you could shave with that knife. Really? Yes. Mm. You should see my white knife. A ceramic one. <laughs> I'll be seeing it later. Yeah. I've seen you cut gigantic pineapples with that little carrot <laughs> knife. All right, when do I know that mincing is done? You're, that's good. Does that seem minced enough? That's, actually, you did a very good job. Oh, thanks. I'm Italian. It's garlic. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Croatian. Oh. Former Yugoslavian. All right. I don't know what that means. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It's funny, my dad 
spoke Yugoslavian, mm -hmm. and I didn't even know he did until I was literally 18 years old. Wow. The only thing I knew, and I still know, if anybody needs to know some good Yugoslavian cuss words, I know them. All right now, you know what that is, right? Ginger. Yeah, do you, you use that in some drinks. I, uh, ginger syrup, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So an easy way, an easy way <laughs> to peel this is with a spoon. Okay. And you just scrape it off. Did you, uh, did you like ginger or Marianne better? Actually, Mary Ann, those little Daisy Dukes. Everybody like Mary Actually, Ann, why am I calling Daisy Dukes? It's pre Daisy Duke. <laughs> I guess they should be calling them Mary Ann's. But they should be calling them Mary Ann's. Yeah. yeah. Daisy Duke was riding the Mary Ann train. You're right. It smells good. It smells super good. So I'm going to slice the, just the tip of that off. What does that smell like? Ginger. That's <laughs> true. So we're gonna go with a half, about a half a teaspoon of this. Okay. The same thing, you know you've used ginger, it's very, very fibrous, mm -hmm. you know, it has all those fibers. So we're gonna break those fibers by doing the same thing. Oh wow, okay. And then. Oh, it smells like sushi, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Two tablespoons of that demerara sugar. Do you know much about Trader Vic's? No, I'm honestly with the whole tiki thing. Like, um, my wife was into it way before I ever was. Sure, yeah. So I'm just sort of learning. Um, so let me let me just teach you the maybe the most important fact about Trader Vic Bergeron. He is credited with inventing the mai tai in 1944. Wow. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Thank you, Trader Vic. Yeah. Spike's adding one teaspoon. Uh, this is toasted sesame oil. This completely changes things. Okay. Have you, you smell that. Wow. Yeah. It smells peanutty. Yes. It completely changes. This would not be the sauce that this is going to be without that. Wow. So if you are allergic to peanuts, can you still... It's sesame seed. It's not peanut. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Science. Science. Then we're just going to add some black pepper. Okay. Probably, probably about a, I don't know, a teaspoon, half teaspoon. I always say this. This is this is pepper from Vietnam. It's a little uh, region in Vietnam, supposedly the world's best pepper. Really? Amazon. Can I have some of that pepper? That's way that is way more than I needed. You said some. You yeah. didn't say a little. Yeah, it's just pepper. I mean, it tastes. <laughs> It's, it's good. good. Honestly, there's nothing crazy special about it, but I read somewhere. Oh. <laughs> there you go. It's pepper. I read somewhere it was the best in the world, so I had to don't buy do, it. Don't do that. No, don't do that. Just whisk this up. <laughs> you need a drink now. <laughs> I know. And there you are. That's it? You're done, brother. Okay, cool. Okay, you want to try this? Yeah. Thank you. Of mm. course, you've got some solid ginger. Realize that's going to be cooked out. Yeah. And this still hasn't come together yet. Okay. So <clears throat> you wow, you got that pepper in your throat. I don't know if it's the pepper, but that there's some spice to that. Yeah, that Thai chili. But it definitely tastes um, Asian. Yes. Of the Orient, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. But there was like a crunchiness to it too. Yeah, but there's still those pieces of ginger in there. Oh, okay. Again, realize it's going to be cooked. It's going to be a yeah. very thin glaze. Okay. And so the garlic, it's not going to be raw. Right. And so that, that raw garlic is always going to kind of burn you a little bit. You okay. Know what I mean? Yeah. But this is good. Again, I made this, I don't know, when we first started talking, I made this. Right. And Long uh, time ago. It was a family hit. Family wow. hit. So. All right, this is going to go in the refrigerator and we're just going to keep you updated on how the ribs are doing. Yeah, stay Oops. tuned. See you guys in a bit. All right, it's been a little over three hours. It's cold out here right now. It is freezing. <laughs> it's, it's nighttime. We're wearing Hawaiian shirts, <laughs> but the ribs are ready to, to glaze out and they are looking gorgeous. Bear in mind when you see these, there is no sauce on them. This is just the smoke from that cherry wood and it, it, it's gorgeous. Oh man, <laughs> there's no glaze on those. No. 
And you could eat them like this, huh? Oh yeah, for sure. Wouldn't they be good? Oh, they'd be delicious. But they're, <laughs> they're gonna be better with this glaze on it. Yeah, they will. Meet you guys over at the cutting. We're gonna glaze these. Oh my God, that smells so good. And the, yeah. Smells so good. So Spike's dog Astro here. You mm -hmm. want some, you want some ribs? Yeah. You can't see them, can you? So we're gonna give it, <laughs> I'm guessing another 45 minutes or so and they, they'll be done. They're, they're already becoming probe tender. We're getting a nice pullback on the bone. So we're gonna be eating ribs here in no time. In, in no the, time. In the meantime, let's make a cocktail. Let's do a cocktail. Okay. All right. All right, so it's been about 40 minutes since you last saw us. Spike's in there right now, getting ready to make his half of this collaboration, the, the cocktail. Wait until you see these ribs, unbelievable. Cannot tell you how good these smell. I have a dog down here who's looking at me with starving eyes. Are you hungry? We'll meet you guys in the breezeway. We're gonna give you, well, We'll let you see us try these ribs. See you inside. Okay, the ribs are all plated up. I hit them with a little sesame seed as like a garnish. They're on top of a banana leaf. And they're just looking and smelling gorgeous. They look incredible. And we have the tiki cocktail That's that Spike kind of taught us all how to make. And it's delicious. We've already tried it. Yeah. What, this what is, is this called again? This is Trader Vic's own punch. This is very mm. own punch. <laughs> That's right. It's lemon, orange, orange curacao, two types of rum. It is so good. And sugar syrup. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sugar. Yeah. Sugar. Rock candy syrup. Rock candy syrup. Yeah. Make sure you click on the link below to, to see how we made this. It's amazing. And I was expecting it to really punched me in the face but it's such a refreshing yeah. drink i mean it's 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 also very cool looking very I mean, pretty i guess it's, it's a real <laughs> macho yeah. thing to say thank it's you a, it's a nice looking drink anyway let's try some ribs yeah Go finally ahead. this has been hours and hours uh grab that one anyone you want that okay one. oh this one yeah. okay oh man it's got a nice you can't really see it yeah you can there's a nice smoke ring there Smells good. That that sauce is really set up and caramelized. Can I eat it now? Eat it. Okay. Oh. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. I know. It's good. Then, have you ever had Chinese five spice? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Are you okay? Are you, I'm okay. Is that pepper? No, it's just I'm trying to cram as much. No. Oh. <laughs> Even, I don't know if hoisin has Chinese five spice in it, but that's what I'm always getting when I use, when mm -hmm. I, the last time I had this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think again, to the important thing to remember is that this is from the recipe of Trader Vic Bergeron. And if I can impart a little bit of uh, history on you. Okay. Trader Vic's was opened in 1934 in Oakland, California. I would say that the most prominent one was the one in Beverly Hills where you could dine across from Hugh Hefner or Rodney Dangerfield or Don Adams for Get, from Get Smart. It was such an institution. It's so incredible to be able to time travel with you through these ribs, through the cocktails, and through all of the decor. I think it's really cool. It's really, really cool. Yeah, these are just phenomenal. I think Astro would agree. Was that good, Astro? <laughs> we got a dog down here that's mm. in hog heaven. <laughs> yeah. Well, you keep feeding them. <laughs> it just keeps dropping off the table. Mm -hmm. Dropping off the bone. Can I have a sip? Mm -hmm. So again, guys, I'm, gonna, I'm going to have a link. You need to check this out. It's I think it's a fun video, too. Mm -hmm. It's a fun video we shot. Yeah. He's super funny in it. I'm not digging on these straws, though, bro. He has these two little weak straws. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. Keep those suggestions coming in. Uh, let's cheers. Yeah, cheers. We'll see you on the next video again. Check the links below. Yeah. Cheers. Aloha. Aloha.
like it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, really I know. Do. It's super good. Everything was so good. Thank you again for bringing these by. 